in good day everyone hello to nightly welcome to our very first lesson for this year and congratulations you are now in year two today we are going to learn the first topic of our science class which is topic one scientific skills so these are the skills which you will be using uh, to be a good scientist okay so if you forget uh, later on or you have already forgotten my name is Mr. Thomas and yes I am also your English teacher so without wasting any more time let's go to our lesson so what will we be learning today you must be wondering isn't it so firstly we will be learning about how to observe Okay, we will look at what observe means later. And number two, we will be learning how to classify things. Okay, two key words for today's lesson. Number one, observe. Observe. Number two, classify. Classify. Got that? Superb. So the first word for today here or the first part of our lesson is observe what is observe so when we observe something we are looking at something we use our eyes or our senses to see what is happening okay so this girl over here our friend her name is nisa nisa has two friends over here both of them are boys. So the question here, they ask, what are Nisa and her friends doing? What are Nisa and her friends doing? What are they doing? Yeah. So number one, they are observing. They are observing. They use their eyes to observe, to see what are they looking at? They are looking at the height of the plant. Height is how tall you are. Okay. So if you can see over here, on the first day, the height of the plant is only four centimeter. Very short. Very, very short. On the seventh day, the height of the plant is seven centimeter. On day 14, the, the height of the plant is 9 cm and on day 21, the plant is 12 cm. Hmm, all of this can only be done when we observe, when we see using our eyes. Observe. Say it with me. Observe. Very good. Okay. We can also observe the number of leaves. Here, look at the table again. On the first day, day one, there, are only, there were only two leaves on the plant, right? On the seventh day, there were five leaves on the plant. And then on day 14, there were eight. And on day 21, there were 10 leaves. Again, all of this we observe using our eyes. Very good. Now, we are also recording. Recording is a very important skill to have as a scientist. Whatever you observe or whatever you do, you must be able to write or record. Understand? Always have a pencil and a book with you everywhere you go. So, Nisa and her friends are recording the height of the plant for day 1, day 7, day 14, and day 21. You see? They are recording the height. Now, let's look at another example of how we observe. You see, Nisa and her brother 
are helping their mother in the kitchen. They must be cooking, isn't it? Yum, yum, yum. So now let's follow their activities below. The mother says we need flour, salt, sugar, yeast, and water to make bread. Hmm, I love bread. Do you love bread? I eat bread, bread every day. Yes. So let's make bread together with Nisa and her mother and her brother. Firstly, we mix the flour with salt, sugar, yeast, and water. Then we knead the dough until it is smooth. Okay, remember we have put in salt, sugar, yeast, and water. After that, we knead the dough until it is smooth. Number three. Next, we cover the dough with a clean wet towel and leave it for an hour. Leave it for an hour. One hour. And look at what Nisa's brother is saying. Wow, the dough has risen. Meaning, the dough has become very big. See, in picture number three, it was so small. And after one hour, the dough has become big. What did Nisa's mother say? Let's put the dough in the oven. We are going to make the bread now. We are going to put it in the hot, hot oven. Alright? So, what can Nisa and her brother observe? Number one, Nisa and her brother can observe what their mother put into the mixing bowl to make bread. So, what is the answer just now? They put in salt, sugar, yeast, and water. Right? Number two, Nisa and her brother can observe what their mother do with the wet towel. They can use their eyes to see what their mother is doing with the wet towel. Excellent. Now, number three, Nisa and her brother can observe what happens to the bread dough after one hour. They can use the eyes again to see what happened to the bread dough. Very good. Now tell me, what can you observe? Hmm, I will give you one example. I, Mr. Thomas, can observe that Nisa's mother's shirt is pink in color. Now you tell me, what about Nisa's shirt? What is the color of Nisa's shirt? Hmm. Fantastic. Very good answer. Let's move on to the next page, shall we? Huh. Look at Nisa's brother's command on the smell of the bread. Wow. This bread smells nice. And what did Nisa say? Don't touch the hot oven. Why? Why should you not touch a hot oven? Very good. A hot oven would burn your hands if you touch it, you know? Don't ever touch a hot oven. Alright? Ding! What does this ding sound mean? Ding here means that the bread is done. The bread is now ready for serving. You can eat it. Yeah? So, Nisa's brother said, Mother, the timer has sounded. Is the bread done? Of course it is. You can eat it now. And see what did he say here? This bread tastes good. It's delicious. It's yummy. Yum, yum, yum. And Nisa said, Yes, this bread is soft and fluffy. Very, very good. Alright? So, these are the things that 
Nisa and her brother can observe. Number one, they saw the changes in the dough. They saw it from small to big. And then they smelled the bread being baked. This one, they use their nose. They can smell the delicious smell of the bread, isn't it? And then they tasted the bread. Mm, 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 very, very delicious. Meaning they use their tongue. Very good. They touched the bread. It was soft, soft and fluffy. They used their sense of touch. Very good. And they heard the sound of the oven. They used their ears. Very, very good. So now look at this blue box. The box says, we gather information about the changes around us by seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, and listening. All of these senses are used to observe. Observe, all right? These process skills are known as observing or observe. Same thing. Got that? Let's move on to the next slide. Huh. The second part of our lesson is classify or classifying. It is another skill which you must have in order to be a superb scientist. Let's look at this. Classifying means putting objects or anything into different groups. For example, over here, we have the first group, animals. The second group, food. And the third group, plants. So what goes in the group of animals? Here we have cats, dogs, and elephants. These three are animals. They are classified as animals. What about food? What are examples of food? We have rice, ice cream, and pizza. These three types of food goes or are classified as food. Got that? And the third category over here, plants. What should be classified as plants? We have coconut tree, orchid plant, and rose flower. These are all plants. They are classified as plants. Very good. Now, we will be looking at animals now. You see, we had just now we had cats, we had dogs, and we had elephants. But now we are going to classify more animals. Ready? Let's take a look at this. We have a duck, a tiger, a penguin, a tapir, an eagle, and a goat. Look at the characteristics our friend has given us. A duck has wings, you know wings? Wings you use to fly, yeah? And we also have um, birds which can fly. We also have penguins who can fly. So let's take a look at this. A duck has wings and two legs. A tiger does not have wings but has four legs. A penguin has wings and two legs. A tapir does not have wings but has four legs. An eagle has wings and two legs. A goat does not have wings but has four legs. Hmm, these are the descriptions given by our friend. Let's look at the next page. The teacher said, we can classify these animals by stating their similar and different characteristics. Alright, so for example, over here, 
a similar characteristic between a duck, a penguin, and an eagle is that they are animals with wings, meaning they can fly. What about the goat, taper, and tiger? A goat, a taper, and a tiger are different from a duck, a penguin, and an eagle because they are animals without wings. They don't have wings. They cannot fly. All right. Therefore, down here, these animals can be classified as animals with wings and without wings. With wings and without wings. Without wings means they don't have wings. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next part of our lesson. Aha! We have the animals here. Duck, penguin, eagle, goat, tiger, and a pair. Let's classify them now. With wings or without wings. What goes into the with wings category, boys and girls? Let's see. Number one, duck. Number two, penguin. Number three, eagle. Excellent. What goes under the classification of without wings? Number one, tiger. Number two, top hair. And number three, goat. Understand? So, animals can be classified as with wings and without wings. Fantastic. Now, this is our homework for today. Make sure you do the homework given and submit to me once you are done. This is the worksheet which I have given you and make sure you follow the answer which we have discussed in this video. I really hope to get your homework submitted to me as soon as possible and see you again in the next lesson. I really, really enjoyed your participation today and I hope you had a great time as well. Till the next time, don't forget to follow my Facebook page called Mr. Tom's English Room and have fun learning science today. See you next time. Bye-bye and thank you.